Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Can two walk together except they what? Except they agree. Two are better than one. Somebody say two are better. Say it again. Say two are better. No matter how good you are, you can never be better as one. You can never be better than two. The Bible says two are better. One of the better things in scripture is two. The Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. That's one of the better things in scripture. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Okay? And one of the other better things is two are better than one. We pray for the blessing on his word today. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let me quickly so that I know who to concentrate on more and less or less. Uh, how many of us are married here? Raise your hands. Married persons, raise your hands. Okay, we have some. I will have even told all the married people to stay in one area. You know, but let me not create disparity. How many of us are single? Okay. So we have a greater percentage of the single. So all married person, would you allow me to take you back memory lane where you started from? All right, so let's start from where everybody starts from and then I will take everybody to where you are all going to. So that means I'm going to start with the singles, refresh the mind of the married ones. And everyone who is married, don't think because I'm talking to singles, it does not concern you. You are supposed to take notes so that you know how to prepare your children for that season. Does that make sense? In this case, everybody needs to learn today. Before you say I do, eight things you must take note of. Every single watching me right now. Before you say I do, I want to speak to you today on the principles for lasting relationships. The principles for lasting relationships. Eight things you must, you must know before you say I do to anybody. I really want to spend time to teach you today because and I want you to take note and I'm excited to see all of you taking notes this really impresses me when I see people taking notes it shows they value wisdom because no matter how good you are you cannot comprehend you will not particularly for me you will not comprehend uh, with your mind 10% of what I'm trying to talk about today so you need to write if you can record you can record it you are free to record in my session you can record and play them again and again. Does that make sense? So if you want to pull out your phone and record, go ahead and do so right now. Eight things you must define before you say I do. Eight things you must help your children to define before they say I do. Eight questions to ask your children. Have you defined this? Have you defined that before your children say I do? age is not the reason to be married readiness is the reason who is shouting jesus we have not started you are shouting jesus <laughs> i told you that you will have a lot to learn today is that okay all right so write that down age is not the reason to be married readiness is how old are you is not the question when it comes to marriage never put pressure on people because of age the only reason why a person should get married is because the person is what ready are you getting what i'm saying here the only reason why you should be thinking about marriage is because you are ready not because you are old and there are eight things to define in order for you to be ready Eight things to define in order for you to say, I am ready. Number one is self-identity. Who am I? Define your self-identity. You cannot be a confused.com and go into the life of somebody and not create greater confusion. Marriage does not define you. Marriage is not a place for definition. Marriage is a place for defined people. Meaning you must know you and I must know me for the two of us to come and say, I do. Who is I? You don't even know I and you say, I do. So self-definition, who am I? 
and you cannot define yourself until you know who you are not and you know who you are so self-definition includes two things the knowledge of who you are not and the knowledge of who you are self-definition is a two-sided thing what I notice people try to do when it comes to self-definition is to say I am this I am this but you also need to know who I am not when they came to John the Baptist they asked John the Baptist a question they said are you the Christ listen to what John the Baptist said he said the first answer was not I am Here's the first answer was I am not did you get that he said I am not the Christ he said I am a voice I am not I am all right so it's important for you to know who you are not now quickly I wish I had a table here I can walk on that because no 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 do you have a board mark a board no okay, don't worry about that don't stress yourself that's okay so can I ask you to do something here I want you to mess up your book a bit I like you do you know singular and plural you remember that kind of a table all right so you're gonna draw that table now I want you to draw a short table on your on your in your material and I want you to write on the left hand side I am not on the right hand side I am now it doesn't matter what age you are of it doesn't matter how long you've been married this is something you need to do all through your life because one of the places where identity even becomes eroded is in marriage one of the places where people really get to even have identity crisis is in marriage when somehow your partner begins to make statements that make you begin to second guess yourself when your husband or wife begins to treat you in such a way that makes you begin to say who am i when somebody begins to make a statement that begins to make you doubt your potential i'm dealing with so many married persons today who have lost their sense of identity the husband look at her and say you useless person several times she's heard that you are not good for anything you can't accomplish anything you know you failed before you failed before now i don't think you're going to succeed in this when the way a woman treats her husband begins to make the man doubt whether there's a king in him or not when the way a man treats his wife begins to make her to doubt whether she is good or not and let me say this no matter what anybody steals from you they have really stolen nothing if you have not lost your identity did you hear what i just said right now you've lost nothing if you have not lost your identity because with your identity you can recover everything you've lost in life knowing who you are is the key to opening doors that are seemingly locked before many so when they asked john the baptist they said who are you he said i am not the christ he said i am a voice so i like you to write on that table singular plural write that table i am not i am okay so i want you to think about this what do you need to put on that i am not column what they told you when you were growing up when you were growing up they said you are good for nothing you are the last child in the family uh, you are not very good mathematics because you are not good at numbers and somebody said you are a dull child why would you call me a dull child because i'm not good at numbers that i'm not good at numbers doesn't mean i'm not good it just simply means i'm not good at numbers and god didn't make everybody to be good at numbers otherwise everybody will have that kind of inclination god created some of us to be good at words so if i'm not good at numbers i must be good at something did you get what i'm saying here oh come on somebody write that down if i'm not good at that i am good at this write that down if i'm not good at that i am good at this there's certainly something you're good at the reason somebody called you a failure is because they have not found your zone of effectiveness the reason you think you are a failure is because you have not found your power zone if you put a fish on a dry land will it swim or struggle talk to me will it swim or struggle if you put a fish on a tree will it jump or fall why 
But if you put a monkey on a tree, will it jump or fall? If you put a monkey in the waters, will it swim or struggle? See, everything you call struggle is simply an indicator that you are not in your zone of strength. Am I talking to somebody here? You are simply amazing. It's just, that, it's just that you've not found your place. So my, my firstborn, my son, if you give my son a book to read, now it doesn't mean he won't read, but you're frustrating him. He will just read, and he will pass. But you can tell the boy doesn't like what he's doing. But give my son a blank sheet and pencil. My son can sit down and start drawing for 18 hours. My son will walk and will not eat. So when we travel abroad from the time he was pretty young, 10, 7, 8, 9, when we travel out of the country, one of the ways my friends normally know my son is that the moment we go into their houses to greet them, my son will just look for a corner. While we are busy, while we are busy interacting, my son will just, by the time you come there, whilst we are busy talking, he has designed something. So I, I and then we notice that he likes just anything artistic. So at JS3, I said, come, boy, what do you want to do? He said, I want to be an animator. I said, really? Well, his mother said, waiting be that one. Because the only professions we know is doctor, lawyer, engineer. Is that okay? Outside of that, there is no other God. <laughs> Ancient of days, as old as you. So the only job that exists in this world is doctor, lawyer, engineer. Outside of that one, there's nothing else. And my son said animation. The mother said, come sweet. I wait the boy will. Is this boy normal? I said, it's normal. She said, what is animation? What are they doing? She, I, I tried to describe. She said, I don't understand. With your description too, I don't understand. So I said, what do we do with this boy? So I carried my son. On one of the holidays we went to, I carried him to Disneyland. You know Disney? Where they do all the cartoons. So we went to Universal Studio. And I took him to where they do animation. He's come and see my son. The moment he got there, he was so excited. We, we don't understand. We just saw things, cartoon, everybody just behaving like they, they don't have bones inside their body. So all that doesn't make sense to me. Is that okay? I'm not a cartoon person. So but my son came alive. I said, geez. My thinking was that if we come there, we say, can you see what they do here? They are not serious people here. All these cartoon people, they are not serious I thought he would change his mind. It's like the got, boy got fired up. Then we took him to the University of Central Florida. When we got over there, we went to the animation department. It was as if my son wanted to follow their window to enter the lab. I said, God. I said, is this what you want to do? He said, yes. I said, okay, no matter what, how many A's you have in your final year in the university, in secondary school, if you don't have A, in art, you will not go to an art school. Sure, the boy came out with his A. So I was like, um, so where would you want to go to school? I was trying to bring him to Nigeria. I said, because you know, it's very difficult to find that kind of school in Nigeria. I was trying to see, see if I can push him somewhere. He said, no, dad, I've decided where I want to go on school. I said, where? He mentioned the name of the school. I said, where? To cut a long story short, short, he chose a school in the U.S. When I went to check, it turned out to be the number one school in animation in the entire U.S. Where they only take 70 something people from the entire world. And by the end of first year, they reduced them to 40. He said, that's where I want to go to. I said, boy, do you know how difficult it is to get admission to this school? I said, from how many countries in the world, they only want 70 something people? What makes you think they will take a Nigerian? I said, can we have plan B? He said, that day, I don't have plan B. I don't have plan C. I only have plan A. <laughs> I said, if they don't take you, you will go to Abuja's university. <laughs> Long and short, he made it. How he made it still amazes me. And by the end of the first year, when they were cutting them down to 40 something, again, he was among their top rated. 
And when my son is in school, call him. He hardly will pick even our calls. He turned 18 and I went to visit him in the universities. I left Nigeria on a Thursday, got on a Friday. And I got into the US on Saturday, drove straight through the ring to his own school just to be there on his birthday. My son came out with all the cake I brought. He said, Daddy, thank you so much. Five minutes in his room. He said, Daddy, I'm so sorry. We're having a project we are working on now. Um, so to, I've already told mommy I don't have time for birthday celebration. I said, okay. I said, you know what? I'm going to be staying in the hotel very close to you in case you change. Hallelujah. I said, in case you change your mind and you want to see me, I'll be in the hotel. I'll be waiting for you. This was on Saturday. Saturday, I didn't hear from him. Sunday, I didn't hear from him. Monday, I didn't hear from him. Tuesday, I didn't hear from him. Wednesday, I called him. I said, um, David, I just said, let me call you to tell you that um, I'm planning to go back home. Oh, he said, Dad, it's so painful. I missed you. <laughs> he said, we have a lot of projects we are doing. He said, please greet mom for me. When I told his mom, his mom said, I will come there. I said, to come and do what? She said, how can he not? Who is there? How dare? Who? I said, baby, I just now confirmed that my son has found his future. If his father cannot be his distraction, nothing in life will distract that boy. I said, we just did a confirmation test. Now that is a boy who is not excited about other things. He has found what excites him. His younger sister is different. His younger sister is the one that will carry, um, what you call this, Doc Diaries. How many of you know Doc Diaries? Okay, some of you is, is the Holy Bible you all know. Yeah. Okay, so Doc Diaries are a little bit big diaries in series. I don't know what series my daughter, my, any of the series my daughter does not have. Now she's 10. She's 11. My daughter finishes a doc diary within 24 hours. She picks it on her way to school. She's reading. On her way back, she's reading. By the time it's midnight, she's done. And she still goes to school the next day. So she likes to read. And what she likes to read, space. If you want my daughter to come alive, make sure you talk about things that have to do with galaxies, stars. I said, what do you want to be? She said, astronaut. I said, Father, all the children, where you give me? Will I say, they are course, no. <laughs> what I told the mom, she said, tell me that one again. <laughs> so this year we did something in Houston. So we decided to take her to uh, the Space Museum. Yes, we took her to the space. Hi, man. As soon as we entered the state space museum, I didn't know when my daughter just walked away from us. She left us. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is Armstrong. That is. I look at my wife. My wife looked at me. So I said, Darling, come, let's walk together. She said, Please, I'm free here. Nobody should walk. <laughs> I learned a lesson and I've shared that with you. Never let anybody define you as a failure because you've been doing something you are not excited about. Your genius will find expression in the place of your excitement. Come on, am I talking to somebody here? If there's anything you must live here with today, you must live here knowing where you belong. And never let anybody make you feel that something you are passionate about is useless. If it is cleaning shoe, do it. If it's fixing hair, do it. Find your identity. It is dangerous to go into relationship or marriage without knowing who you are. So eight things you must define. Number one is you must define yourself. Number two, you must define your purpose. Purpose definition. Why am I here? What is my assignment? 
because it is dangerous for you to marry someone who is not excited about your assignment number one whosoever you want to marry must know who you are and must be excited about you please don't miss what i said if the person you want to marry is not excited about you the person is excited about the idea of you but not you the person is excited about the job you have the profession oh you are an engineer oh my goodness so the person is excited at marrying an engineer not you I hope I'm helping somebody here because many of you don't know the difference you don't know when somebody's excited about your career you think it's you the person is excited at somebody wants to marry you because you are a pastor so it's the pastor the person is excited at not you somebody wants to marry you because of the platform you have not you not the person you are so my excitement is at your platform because the platform will amplify me and you are unable to differentiate between the person's love for the platform and the person's love for me you confuse the person's love for my platform with the person's love for me there are two different things i can be excited when i think about your profession but not excited when i think about you ask married people they will tell you what i'm talking about it is the reason why the man is proud anytime we want to talk about his wife whenever he wants to talk, come and meet my wife she's a medical have you noticed he's always quick to say she's a medical doctor she's an engineer my wife is the so 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 person is is more quick to talk about what you do what you have but then when you get home when you get home he treats you like a trash but treats your career as a trophy the married ones will tell you they know what i'm talking about i just finished talking to somebody way up in government way way up in government married woman for over 20 something years now and she said pastor sam everybody wants to be like us even in our church they see me and my husband come we walk into church and everybody come and mommy pray or lay hands on us transfer the grace of your marriage on us she said i wish they know what they're asking me to transfer she said pastor sam it is almost seven years now my husband and i don't touch each other that the man has already started going out to somebody else define your purpose young men young men define your purpose why am i here why did god put me on planet earth hello sir you don't need a partner if you've not defined your purpose it is purpose before partner did you hear that it is purpose before partner young girls it is important for you to know your purpose before you start talking about the man you want to marry you know why it is going to be a frustration in your life for you to marry someone who doesn't have space for the expression of your own purpose true it is dangerous to marry somebody whose purpose and your purpose are not connected my purpose must find expression in his purpose his purpose must have space for my purpose does that make sense that she has a fine face doesn't mean we will have a fine future that the guy is tall dark and handsome doesn't mean that two of us will go very far so define your purpose number three write this down destination connection it's not just that our purpose looks alike do we feel like we are going to the same destination so define your destination make sure there is a connection in your destination the pastor who pastored me in 1991 an amazing man of god in lagos a man everybody celebrates and we all honor him in great great grace when he teaches the word you'll be mesmerized such a gift 20 years after his marriage the wife woke up and told him sorry i'm going to america you better fold up this if you want our marriage to continue fold up this ministry in nigeria let's go and the ministry is doing amazingly well 
in Nigeria. The ministry is the home to some of the best, some of the top people in this country. That's where they worship. But the wife says, sorry. Me, I like America. <laughs> and the man says, sorry. God called me to Nigeria. She said, look, you better fold this in up if you want our marriage to continue. That was a private threat he was going through. Long and short, he said, sorry, I'm called to Nigeria. She said, well, if you are called to Nigeria, good luck to you. I have to leave. That was how they ended up in a divorce. She left for America and he is single in Nigeria. From that moment, it began to affect him in ministry. 20 years. They came to 20 years before they realized their destination does not connect. Please look at your neighbor and say, don't miss it. May we not enter the same ship heading to different directions. A woman said to me, she said, Pastor Sam, a wife of one of the public celebrities in town, in Abuja, in the country too. She said, Pastor Sam, people will be envying me now that I'm married to a very wealthy guy. And if you see our picture on Facebook, Pastor Sam, you will think our marriage is heaven on earth. She said, Pastor Sam, this is almost six months now. She said, I will just hear my husband is in Abuja. I have not seen him at all. That is either in this, I will hear he's in Sheraton today. Tomorrow I hear he's in Hilton. Next tomorrow I hear he's in here. Tomorrow. She said, one of the days I was driving on the road. I was driving this way. My husband was going the other way. We saw each other on the road. destination Lord said I'm going to the mountain the wife said I prefer the place where we're coming from their marriage ended on the ground of two different destinations in the mind of two different individuals Lord said the Lord said I should go to the mountain the wife said which mountain I'm following you to no mountain me my mind is in Sodom and that was the end of that marriage please don't just marry because the person looks nice don't just marry because the person somebody recommended the person don't just marry because i'm getting old marry because number one the person values my identity who i am marry because our purpose connects marry because our destination aligns number four quickly love expression make sure that you marry someone because the person loves you practically not in words the bible said children let us not love in what in words let's not love in words only oh i love you how are you doing look at all the ladies now they just open their eyes <laughs> it's like your body tone voice you can stand it huh look through your window what do you see Anybody remember that? What do you see? Oh, I love you. Oh, man. Oh, God. Your eyes like that of a dove. Ah, God, me. Your teeth are just as white as milk. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is why I encourage parents please make sure you affirm your children at home mothers affirm your sons first thing i told my wife i said come on sweetheart i said hug my son i said my son and i we hug but it's just like it doesn't make any difference when block me to block nothing make a difference so i said but sweetheart hug my son i said because the boy is going to school in a place where hugging is their culture Nigeria mothers, Nigeria mothers and their sons. Hey, if they get close, na slap. <laughs> Let's do some practical thing, which we always do, so that we use it to tell mothers how serious this matter is. Every young man here whose mother has never looked at him and said, "My son, come, I want to hug you." If truly speaking from your heart, your mom has not; she doesn't have a culture of hugging you. Raise your hands up. God bless you, sir. Raise your hand. I'm sincere. We're not joking here. Raise your hands up. Don't be ashamed. There's nothing about it. We just want the mothers to know how serious this matter is. 
How many of you guys will say your mother is a culture? Your mother normally hugs you. You just hug each other. Guys. These are men. These are married people. Here. <laughs> These are married people. Here. <laughs> so you will find a situation whereby we don't have it as a prevailing culture. Is that okay? It's not a prevailing culture. So what we say to mothers is hug your sons until hugging becomes normal until having contact with a woman no longer because first of all i'm doing it with my mom so it is okay so if i go outside and a white girl comes to hug me or a black girl comes to hug me there's nothing but when there has been a scarcity of it the day there is supply Huh? The first day this guy saw, when the woman thought is like father, what did just happen? What, what did just happen to me? So let there be practical demonstration of love. So the first thing that my daughter has gotten used to is being hugged by her father. Healthy hugs. My daughter wakes up in the morning, first thing she does is to hug her father. Last thing she does in the night is to hug and to give me a kiss. So it's my daughter is it's so serious. He is one of my senior protocol officer. It's so serious that my daughter also does the same to people. So we are the ones cautioning. We say, no, that is reserved for I am that I am. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine the first day that my wife, you could see when, when my wife had to hug my son, you could see the fact it was not easy. Oh yeah, let's hug each other. You can see drama between mother and son. So now it's natural for them. So make sure that you define the fact that the person truly loves me. Not I think he loves me. Please, there's a difference between I know he loves me and I think he loves me. Many get married with, I think he loves me. Only to find out that I now know he doesn't love me. Paul said, I know in whom I believed. Not, I think I know. So don't think it, know it. Number six. Me, number what? You don't want to meet, lose anything, right? Make sure you define character. Don't trust in someone that society have a problem with. Everybody knows him as a bad boy. You are the only one that have decided to paint him as a good one. He sleeps with everybody. You are the only one that is blind to that. Don't worry. You know men have weakness. Not all men have weakness. Stop helping us to explain foolishness. Huh? His name is all over payment apps. He has not paid all the monies he has collected. Hey, you know it's his pressure. You are always the one explaining him away. And you know God likes bad people. Really. <laughs> Make sure you define the family background. Where does it come from? Never ignore where somebody's coming from. Apples don't fall too far from the trees that bore them. Is that okay? So we always say make sure you do a definition of the background of the person. Where is a family background? How was he raised? I wish I can talk to you on that today. Never ignore somebody's family background. It is a culture here in the East to know where you come from. And please don't overrule your parents if they have an issue with the family background make sure that you get to know what they have an issue with and see if it is resolvable or not resolvable don't allow love to make you overrule reason otherwise by the time love has gone down with his passion you will now see a reason why you should not have ignored reason 
if there is divorce in their bloodline if there is polygamy in their bloodline don't ignore it ask the guy practical questions if the guy doesn't say anything wrong with what his father has done it's obvious he will repeat it in his lifetime of all the definitions you must do never fail to do a divine confirmation approve a test if God doesn't say go, if God doesn't approve of it, it doesn't matter who and who has approved of it, don't move. How do you build a healthy relationship? I just gave you all those little tips so that those of you that want to get married in case I don't get to see you before you get married, in the next few months i hope you use those simple things to check am i on the right course now i want to move like i said from there to those of us whether you are married or not let's talk about some principles here in luke chapter 6 verse 47 the bible says, whosoever comes to me verse 47 whosoever comes to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them i will show you to him whom he is like in verse 48 it's like a man who builds a house and dig deep. Somebody say dig deep. I'm not hearing you clearly. Say it louder. Help me look at somebody and tell the person dig deep. The Bible says the man dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it. Somebody say could not shake it. So there are unshakable relationships. There are unshakable marriages. When it could not shake it, the Bible said it could not shake it because it was built on a rock. Verse 49. But he that heareth my words and does not do them is like a man who without a foundation built a house on the sand against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was very great. So let's look at some few things. There are three things you must give attention to in the Old Testament and in the New Testament if you want to be very successful in life, in relationship, and in marriage. Three powerful things you must give attention to in order for you to be successful in life, in your career, in your ministry in your relationship and in your marriage number one when you read your bible give attention to the person of god and the person of jesus christ the person the person of god and and, and i know a lot of us give attention to that because i see some of you when you are praying you are worshiping oh you are jehovah rapha that's the person of god Oh, you are my shepherd. You are my Rafa. You are my this. That's the person of God. Mm -hmm. And then the person of Jesus Christ. You want to give attention to that. Oh, you are my savior. You are my Lord. You are my redeemer. That is the person of Jesus Christ. Knowing the person of God and Jesus Christ gives you peace and salvation. It is the knowledge of his person that establishes your peace. It is the knowledge of his person that brings you salvation. So when I know he's my El Shaddai, it takes away fear from me. Is that okay? When I know he's my Jehovah Rapha, El Gibor, it, it, have you noticed anytime we start praising God, it makes you feel good, right? That's what knowing the person of God can do for you. Knowing the person of Jesus is what secures your salvation. When I see what he did, the person, he went to the cross, he shed his blood, he died for me. So the person of Jesus secures your salvation. Number two, know the power of God and the power of Jesus Christ. The power of God and the power of Jesus Christ. I'm taking you step by step into what I want to share with you today. The power of God, when you begin to study about the power of God, you see how he breaks the Red Sea. You study about the power of God, how he made an iron head to swim. 
you're studying the power of God how Jesus his power multiplied bread when you study the power of God it makes you to be able to receive healings miracles breakthroughs and deliverance is that okay so anytime you want God's power to be demonstrated in your life study what his power has already done in scripture does that make sense so what you want to do anytime you want to see miracles in your life is to spend time to read stories of what God has done for others does that make sense so we say you study his person and we study his word it's part number three the principles of God and the principles of Jesus Christ now this is where the trouble in the church and so particularly in the east and even some part of our western part in Nigeria in fact it's worse in the north in the north there's so much study about the the person of God so they talk a lot about who God is you understand now when you go over to the west we are so much into the power of God do you understand that so you find the western people the Yorubas and all they're always going to church yeah there's prayer meeting pump that's why the biggest prayer camps are in the west and, and people go there they're not just going there to know about God though it's not that you come and sit down and be lecturing us about God no no <laughs> we must uh, power do you understand that now the western people have the reason why the western church the churches in the west have started doing a little bit better than other parts of the country is because the western churches have gone a little bit deeper into what what would you think the principles is that okay now the eastern church by by application you will notice that the eastern church the application of the principles is where we need to push up and that's where we thank God for a generation like yours that is beginning to rise is that okay now let's come down to the principles of God's word now the principles is basically looking at the Bible and finding out to apply it to my business looking at the Bible and as I hear let there be light wait a minute why is it that of all the things God made first the most important thing he started with was with what light okay so that means if I want my community to develop I must first of all make sure there's what so it's not just reading the Bible but applying what the principle are you getting what I'm saying here so we start reading the Bible with a different eye we start reading the Bible with the purpose of making sure after I read the Bible I see what God has done in the scripture how do I take that principle and apply it to my marriage to my business it is when the principles of God's word begins to guide the operation of our marriage businesses career that will begin to see growth like we've never seen before do you understand what I'm saying so we want to look at the principles of God's word as it undergirds our marriages and I trust God that because when you begin to apply that you begin to prosper you begin to succeed I was asking a question the last time I came have you noticed something very prevalent in the east and somehow too in the west most of the businesses that used to do well five ten years ago where are they today our businesses rise and then they do what because they were not built on what man the principles of god's word anything built on the principle of god's word will last any marriage built on the principle of god's word will last so let's look at some principles today that will help us to build start build and completely sustain viable relationships never forget that relationship is the gateway to intimacy you want to be intimate with anybody you want to be close to anybody relationship is the gateway number two relationship is the door to favor master relationship and you will always attract favor master relationships and you will always attract favor please let me say something here there is no part of the world and no part of the country that has mastered what we call um what we call um mentorship like the eastern part of this country 
The Eastern part has mastered mentorship, which is learn from me in order to become whatever you want to become. Does that make sense? You can't take it from the East. You have done amazingly well there. The danger with that is that if we're not careful, it begins to move into almost every aspect of our lives. Whereby anytime I'm close to you is because there's something I want to get from you. Do you get it now? Which is the reason why we hurt each other. So if Pastor Chidi is doing something very great, I am around him not just because I want to bless him, not just because I want to serve him. I'm serving with an intent, an agenda in mind. Which normally will make me to eventually undercut him. So you find out that when somebody is rising, somebody close to him cuts him down. Am I making a point here? So we need to change a little bit in the way we relate. There is a place for relationship with the purpose of learning, with the purpose of becoming something. Are you catching what I'm saying here? But there's a place for relating with somebody because I just want to add value to you with nothing. hallelujah okay we'll work it out please I, I really want to make sure because a generation must arrive with a different thinking and I know what I'm confronting I speak at bigger meetings with your elders we must approach relationship differently and one of the things we need to add so the way we relate with each other is whereby I just I just came to serve you, not because I want to pick anything, just because I want to serve you. I just want to love you. I just want to honor you. I'm not looking for anything. I'm I'm not doing it because I have a plan. In five years' time, I will shock you. Are you catching what I'm saying here? So relationship is the gateway to favor. Relationship is the door to wisdom. As you relate to people, you access their wisdom. As you relate to people, you access their wisdom. Everything you want to become in life can be powered by relationship. Everything you want to become in life can be powered by relationship. So I have people in my life who are senior men of God that I just, I just saw them and they took interest in me. And guess what I did, ma'am? I just went to serve them. Daddy, is there anything I can do, sir? I said, sir, have you written a book? He said, no, sir. He has not written a book. I said, daddy, I can help you write a book. Ah, he said, sir, it's difficult for me to write a book. I said, sir, don't worry. I can do that for you. So uh, his assistant, one of my assistants in the church, a pastor, I said, daddy, can I have all your messages? And he gave me all his messages on a particular subject. And I handed it to my, one of my assistants in church. I said, transcribe all of them. And he transcribed all of, all of them. And we turned them into books. And I was there when the books were being launched. All in his name. And I marketed the book for him on that day. I didn't collect a dime. And I didn't write it so that maybe through writing his book I can get contract. No, 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 no. I knew it was my service. I was sowing a seed that only God can reward. Please follow me carefully here. I'm taking us to a place of selflessness. One of my pastors whom I honor in London is uh, like the number two man for the whole of Redeemed Christian Church of God in London. One of the days he just called me out of the blues. I said, Sam, how are you? I said, Daddy, I'm fine. He said, Sam, I just want to have a book on faith. He says, anything you can do about it? I said, Daddy, just can you send me the, the chapters and I'll build on that. He said, that's even the problem. He said, I don't even have the content. I don't have chapters. I said, Dad, is there any material I can build on? He said, nothing. He said, I just feel like having a book with faith. I said, okay, Daddy, that's, so can I exercise my liberties to write? He said, go ahead. And from sir, titling to chapterizing to content, everything, I handed over a book to him. 
and he called me say sam how are you doing i said daddy very well he said the book is one of the leading books now on amazon whose name is on it I see my brother saying chai. chai. <laughs> I know. I know. Now, he could pay me. If I told him that daddy, I want you to pay me, he could have paid me. And he will pay me out. Is that okay? But I gave it to him. There's a friend of mine in the U.S. Um, you know him, Pastor Chidish. You know him, uh, William McDowell. William McDowell. Some of you know William. I give myself away. Okay, so so he's a good friend of mine. Now, William's church was barely six months old. Nobody knows. Six months. Very small church, like this. This this kind of a hall. The church was six months old. Now, as at the time when William's church was six months old. I was already on TBN worldwide in the US. I was already preaching in Florida in churches that have campuses. And you know what God said to me? He said, son, you're about to start a church in the United States. He said, stop preaching on big platforms. He said, go and serve in that small church. He said, how would you want to start a church in America and not serve in a church in America? He said, go and serve that church for five years. And I didn't tell him. And I shut down all other invitations. And I started coming to serve Pastor Williams Church. Anytime they call me. The moment they call me and they say, sorry, sir, I would like you to come and preach in our church. I said, okay, no problem. Then they will come and say, can we get your ticket? I never let them buy a ticket for me one day. I fly myself to, to the U.S. Did that for five years. So, because everybody is seeing now, oh my God, God is opening doors for Reverend Sam all over the United States. I gave up TBN to serve that church. Guess who has had me now on their platform? Daystar. See how it works? See how it works? I did not go to Daystar. Daystar called me. And as soon as I got to Daystar, we did global broadcast for Daystar. Daystar now said, you know what, sir? Joni said, you know what? We want you on. Daystar are very careful with black people. If you study Daystar. They said, sorry, we've been looking for a prayer net platform. Because they got to here, we do our morning prayer, the prophetic prayer, which we do. How many of you know about it? Somebody say, ha. <laughs> yeah, that's so. Now they got to know about the prophetic prayer hour. I did not know that they watched it. They corporately watched it. And you know what they said? We have concluded that we should partner with you to publicize it to America. They said it fits our philosophy because it is word based. Did, what if I had given up the word culture and tried to do something popular? Help me look at your neighbor and say, stay with your identity. <laughs> now we are going beyond just a little broadcast. They say, sir, we want you to be online. We want you to have a program on our platform. So we are sending them the first clip of the program we're going to be doing. They want to see, make sure every lightning and all of that is okay. And then we're going to resume with Daystar. But what did I give up? TBN. I gave, I gave up ministering in churches so that I can focus on serving one church for five years. Now at the end of it, what has God done for me? Now I'm not just in that small church. I'm ministering in multiple cities across the entire United States. We can't even cover the cities. Help me look at your neighbor say, serve, serve. Why did I share this with you? When you are going into marriage, please, sister, can you just hold on, sir, so that we don't have distraction? The lady with the water. Please, ma. I'm very sensitive with movement. Now, this is, this is where the challenge of the church is. 
if it is power program which I can turn this whole place now everybody will be on the floor but your life is not changed through the encounter with the power of God it is the knowledge of the word of God that transforms you but it is what we don't have patience for have you noticed that churches that emphasize power don't see transformation in their people's lives check places where they focus on teaching check the growth of their church have you noticed that churches where the pastors focus on power the moment he dies the church scatters but check churches where they focus on teaching the moment the old pastor that the church continues build your life have stamina for teaching you shall know the truth and the truth you know now you shall know prayer after you finish praying get knowledge what transforms you is the entrance of his word are you catching what I'm saying here your marriage will not be better if the word of God does not enter you that's why we are focusing on what power person or principle which one are we focusing on which one will change our marriage is it power no it's what sir principles number one principle that will change your marriage and I'll run through them as much as I'll just share maybe like seven or eight with you because of our time one of the principles that will give you lasting solid relationship and marriage is the principle of foundation the principle of foundation Psalm 1, 1 Psalm 11 verse 3 if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do foundation matters it is very powerful for you to give attention to foundation write this down the principle of foundation states that you cannot build a solid and lasting relationship on a weak foundation on a weak or wrong foundation you cannot build a solid and lasting relationship on a weak and a wrong foundation you cannot it's a matter of time it's a matter of time the kind of foundation you are building your relationship on will be revealed I saw something in Haiti I don't know if anybody remember when there was an earthquake in Haiti you, you saw you saw the earthquake you, you saw the way houses came down so a research was done as to why is it that so many of the houses collapsed guess what they said they said the reason for most of those earthquakes I mean most of the collapse was that the foundation of the houses were too weak to withstand the earthquake they now did a comparison and they found out that such an earthquake happens in Japan and buildings don't shake. Why? Japan already in the building of their houses, they have already incorporated the assumptions of earthquake into the foundation of the house. So any earthquake that pulls down a house in Japan you can be sure that earthquake can wipe out a community somewhere else. Why? They walked on the foundation. Don't miss foundation. It is not how fast your relationship goes. It is how strong it grows. Please write that down. Foundation matters. what is a foundation i want you to think about this everybody look here C can you see this thing now can you see how this is dangling because what this place is what can you see this that's why it's dangling is that okay please i cannot have you come put it on the ground i want to show you difference in foundation put it on the ground sir 
not even me I want you to jump on the ground jump jump like jump do you see it move take it back sir watch I want to make a statement you must never forget it is the right thing on a weak foundation watch this man over time because of a weak foundation this thing can fall and it will suffer the glass will be broken this thing will be damaged not because of anything wrong with it but because it allowed itself to be built on a wrong don't let your life be ruined because you built your life on the relationship that first of all is wrong if the foundation of your relationship is wrong it will not only ruin the person it will ruin you There are many who are crying today in marriage because they were built on a wrong foundation. A foundation is the underlying reason why we get into something. So foundation is the reason. Why did we get into this? What led us into this? So when we're talking about foundation in relationship, we're talking about the reason why we started, how we started. Why did we get into it? Please, if you have questions, I'm going to give you room later to ask your questions. So feel free to write your questions down. Foundation is the intention behind going into the relationship with the person. The intention, the intention. <laughs> Please, that somebody say, I love you, I want to marry you, doesn't mean that the person has genuine intention for you. There are those who see you as ladders to the next level whilst you are busy saying i love you you know mommy i have found the person i want to marry me i have found the person i want to marry you don't even know that the person has sighted you from afar that happened to one of the ladies a sister to one of our women in church this guy came into her life and the next thing we got to hear within a few months and we're told that this girl says she wants to get married and the sisters were concerned so i said okay they were so worried that i had to go to their house 10 o'clock in the night i didn't leave that house until about 1 a.m in the night one past midnight and we were like why are you why, why do you want to get married to this guy eh, she started giving us flimsy and we were like are you sure this guy doesn't have an ulterior motive to cut a long story short we later got to discover watch this carefully it will it will amaze how people map their movement so this guy is into politics is that okay now he wants to can i have you there sir thank you stay there no you can stay yeah god bless you so he wants to meet with there is somebody in pdp that the guy wants to meet with he has tried meeting the man he couldn't meet the man are you catching what's going on he now discovered can i have you my sweet sister come he now discovered watch this um, can I have another senior sister who's going to be a senior sister <laughs> yes ma'am God bless you ma'am alright thank you so much he now discovered watch this that this girl is living with this one who is her elder sister come Danica and he now discovered that this one is very close to this one. He then came to this one's office through her friend and pretended, watch this, he's already known all of this. He now came to this lady pretending like he had never known her before. I started greeting her and gradually he took interest in her I said he wants to marry her the sister became concerned she revolted before we say Jack the guy convinced her because the political season was drawing close 
he put that girl under pressure so that they can be married the elder sister was saying slow down before she knew the sister was at home when she was told that they were going to do court marriage by the time the sister was trying to recover from that she got to know that her sister was pregnant even at that point we're like sorry don't continue she was like no she's going to continue longer and short of it the sister allowed her and this girl went with the guy and she stopped coming to church sorry sir you can go get out of the equation thank you my sister god bless you she stopped coming too sorry come back man <laughs> she stopped coming to church had a baby for a while about a year i didn't see her or two all of a sudden i noticed started coming to church again by this time the guy has been unmasked the the bozo that he was that she thought was a boaz has just been exposed but the sad part of it is that she has two children for him now her life totally messed up she's back to her sister's house they are now the one taking care of her because pdp is no more in power in the federal and what what he was pursuing It is now the whole thing became so clear to her. What the whole strategy was. But they were trying to tell her she would not listen. Foundation. Thank you man. God bless you. Foundation. Please put your hands together for her. Anytime you are in a relationship where every little thing. They are shaking. Sorry it's not you. You are not the one shaking it. The foundation can carry it. You are too heavy for the kind of foundation you are built upon. That relationship is not designed to carry you. The foundation of that, the reason why you got into a relationship with that person is not sufficient enough to carry the kind of destiny that you carry. Never play with knowing why somebody is interested in you. It's not like being inquisitive. Please, you deserve to know why you love me. You deserve the right to know why somebody is saying I want to marry you. Why? You need to know. And many of us are afraid of asking why. Thinking if I ask, he will leave me. She will leave me. Make sure you know what you are building your relationship on. The philosophy of the person is part of the foundation. I have a lady who is from the eastern part here. Very amazing lady. She served in Abuja in the Nigerian Christian Corpus Fellowship at the senior level. And I got a call from my husband. It was the husband that called me. I said, Pastor, please, I know my wife respects you. I said, ah, so what's the problem? And he said, sir, uh, my wife my wife has decided she doesn't want to see me again with my children so that she wants us to have a divorce please pastor i know you can talk to her you know how they can use pastors and he said pastor i've been following your ministry ah pastor your, your power, prayer ministry is very powerful though i didn't know it's a new member <laughs> by circumstance do you understand that's how I called the wife. Hello, madam. How are you? She said, oh, Reverend Sam, it's you. You called me today. I'm honored. I said, uh, sorry, it's not. We are not here for play. It's a serious matter. Your husband just told me that you want to leave him. I said, my, he has been following my ministry recently. She said, Reverend Sam, which ministry? <laughs> <laughs> so, see, see, Pastor, this guy, they follow your ministry. She said, Reverend, don't let him mess up your integrity. I know you as a man with respect. And she said, look, my husband does not believe in God, does not honor men of God. He speaks against men of God. She said, the man I marry, I regretted in my life that I ever have to marry, carry the investment of men of God like you in my life, the investment of my parents, and I put it on his platform. She said, if you see how we insult men of God in my presence. She said, Pastor, before I start insulting men of God, let me leave number two she says sir he doesn't believe in marriage 
he doesn't believe in the philosophy of marriage he said the only thing he thinks he needs marriage for is for children that he just wants to have children that's all that's why if you know how this guy treats me so i now called him as a bros look at all the things that i'm hearing about you he says sir you know since i started listening to your ministry i have decided to change <laughs> foundation foundation is not physical foundation are things you can't see but they influence what you see the philosophy of the person the ideology of the what does the person believe about marriage what does the person believe about respect about love about submission philosophy ideology don't just sit down and be talking about, you know, as I was looking at your eyes, it reminds me of the dove. Your teeth is as white as milk. Leave all those poems. Let's leave that. Let's focus on important things. What are your philosophies? Do you believe in family? Ask questions. The ideology, the philosophy of the person, they undergird what we call, they act as what you call the foundation. Find out what inspires the person's choice of you. Find it out. What inspires your choice? Ask the person. Don't build on smooth talk. Build on straight talk. Anytime you want to talk, can we, can, can we talk about our future? Can we talk about our children? How about money? What do you do for a living? Oh my God. What do I do for a living? Oh, Felice Marata. God you have no idea who you are dealing with I'm, I'm a global force I'm a catalytic dynamic I'm something that is about to happen to this world I'm, hi, shabaratata. Uh, hello sir the catalytic and dynamic can you break <laughs> where does catalytic work hello sir how much do they pay oh God how much do they pay me who can pay me Huh? <laughs> who can pay me my god so so what's the plan for the future like in five years time ten years time where do you see us where do you see yourself where are you taking your career to do you have first degree what's the next thing my god hi see i see your level now be careful when somebody begins to cut you to size because they don't know how to answer questions. My God, I can see now. You are not... Uh, anyway, don't worry. By association with me, you will grow. Listen, you, you know the Bible says who can understand the way of the wind? The way of the wind. So is one that is born of the Spirit. Our ways are beyond... <laughs> Our ways are beyond finding. So how can you be talking about 10 years time? I will amaze you where we appear in 10 years time to shock you. <laughs> Somebody say Abuja. <laughs> Wait, even the son of God that you are talking about, that you are following, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. A mental picture of where we are going to. I will come back to pick you. Clear mental picture. Do you understand? At least a general overview where will they go? Daniel's 70th week. At this time, this will happen, that will happen, that will happen. When you see nation rising against nation, kingdom again, know that the summer is, is already getting near. This is somebody who is keeping his people abreast of what they need to know. But you, where are we going to? Oh, my As the Spirit of God is taking us somewhere. We are. Don't build your relationship on smooth talk. Build it on straight talk. Build it on scripture, not on tradition. Build it on scripture. Whenever you are close to somebody and the person is talking more, you know in our culture, you know in our tradition. Wait, which, 
wait, I'm not a traditional wife. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. So I need to be clear. Who am I marrying? A traditionalist or a Christian? And it's important for you to define these issues. Are you building the marriage on tradition or what? On scripture. So that I know what I'm signing up for. I'm talking about foundation in relationship. Many have been surprised at the end when the husband passes away. Then all of a sudden tradition takes effect. They, well, I, but I didn't know this. Well, sorry. You should have found out. Number three, write this down. Number what? No, now. I'm still talking to you on foundation and I've given you two already. And by the way, you can't, you, you don't have to get everything I have here. I'm not going to give you everything. Because no. some of you want to write a book out of this mind. <laughs> the way you are writing this, I, I think I'm becoming more careful now. I should be careful what I give you. I also see a book now, Seven Key or Lasting Marriage. <laughs> Build on readiness, not age. Build on what? I told you at the beginning. So when you hear somebody saying, you know, my parents want me to get married now. I'm of age. I'm of age. Say, oh God, sorry, sir. No be me, you go marry because of age. Are you ready? Are you ready to share your life with somebody else? Are you ready to share your space with me? So build on readiness, not just age. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? Build on responsibility, not sensuality. Build on what? Responsibility. Are you sure you're writing that? Build a smart girl recording. Build on responsibility, not sensuality. Can I touch your nose? <laughs> Fine girl. Uh, uh, your forehead, eh? can I rub it small? Hi. Now, wow. We are walking my presence. Do catwalk. We are changed from catwalk now. We are turning to mouse walk. We are changed. Change to elephant walk now. We are quickly. See, responsibility. Is that okay? Focus on responsibility, not sensuality. Not all this touch, touch, touch me, touch, kiss me, rub me, rub me. Hello, sir. Are you paying your house rent? If you don't have your own house, do you pay house rent? Where are you working? How much do you earn per month? It's a mystery. My income is... <laughs> Hallelujah. So please, never marry someone who is irresponsible. And how do you know that somebody is not going to be responsible when the person is married to you? Just study how the person manages his or her own affairs. Huh? Just, uh, just study the person's life. <laughs> the older the person is, the more older the person is, the more you need to really give attention at your age. It is expected that certain things should be in place. If at certain age you can't find certain things in place, start asking questions. Why is it at this age you have not attained certain things? Now there is a possibility certain things in life, he may have started life very late. He may come from a background that predisposes him. So it's, but it's important that you know. Hallelujah. Build on present reality, not past pains. I will talk to you more about that very shortly. Build on present realities. I'm talking about foundation, how you should build, things you should build on. I want to make a statement that may not, may not 
go well with many of you who are church people. Build on investigation, not assumptions. Did you hear what I just said now? Build on what, ma? Investigation, not what? Assumptions. <laughs> Abuja people understand this one very well. Because guys who just show up in Abuja, wear palm slippers, look like very wealthy guys. Anytime they are coming to your house, they look clean. And then when you want to come and visit them, they've arranged with their friend. So you visit them in their friend's house. You live here? Wow. And you too, you don't have eyes for details. <laughs> because if you have eyes for details, you will see one picture behind one place somewhere. No eyes for details. And many of them, by the time they finish getting married, they start hearing, sorry, um, the landlord said he wants to vacate everybody living in the house. Now where your story starts with that? Build on invest. Hello, ma. If it is worth investing your future into, it is worth investigating. Write that down. If it is, <laughs> this girl is hitting her head. <laughs> Praise God. I hope you are learning something here today. Too much. <laughs> if it is worth investing your life into, it is worth what? Investigating. Can I say that again? If it is worth investing your life into, it is worth what? Go on the person's Facebook page. Not recent pictures. Go back to when they open the page. Take time. Be patient. <laughs> Get on Twitter. Sometimes, sometimes you go and join things like Bigo. You join all these other crazy platforms. Is that okay? Try using his name. Sometimes check on his Twitter. Go back to old time. You'll find one name he was using before. Sometimes go to the back end of his Twitter page. The original name he was using before. You'll find some things. And the same thing happens to the women. If it is what investing your life into, it is what what? Fantastic. I wish I can talk more on this issue of foundation because it's, the foundation is the foundation of all things. Make sure you build on God's confirmation, not man's opinion. Before you start the relationship, make sure that God gives you a yes. Everybody can say yes. If God doesn't say yes, don't move. <laughs> let me quickly move to second thing I want to share with you second principle that will help you and you're finding all of these things in the word of God listen to what the Bible says in, in, in the scripture we read the Bible says two people were to build sir am I correct two men were to build everybody say build so they all had the same mission to do what to build but when it was time to build look at what happened sir the Bible said one of them when it came to the place to build he saw beautiful sand. The man said, Chai, this thing is so beautiful, but um, I'm not going to build on what I see. Have a look at your neighbor and say, don't build on what you see. So the Bible says the man decided to do something. He said, let me scoop off what I see. And let me dig a little bit. And he began to dig and dig and dig whilst he was digging the other guy that one came saw the whole place looked beautiful and I was like wow man quickly he got out blocks and started building on something that looks beautiful started building immediately and guess what whilst he was building up the other guy was, the other guy was what who was faster the one that built on the sand, right? And I can imagine him whilst his house was going up. He was looking at the other one laughing at him, right? 
because the other one was digging deep. Come and talk to someone again. Say dig deep. The guy kept on digging, ma. Until when? He dug until he found a rock. He dug until he found what? He found the rock. Please, don't miss what I said. He kept digging until he found a reason to build. Are you catching what I'm saying now? The rock is the reason to what? To build. It may take me time. I'm not in a rush. I'm going to keep digging. Something tells me to keep digging into this guy. I need to keep digging into this girl. Is that okay? I need to dig more. Let me dig a little bit here, a little bit there. Let me get to know those who know him. What church does he worship in? Who is his pastor? What do they know about him? Is he in the choir? Are you ready? Is he in the choir? If he's in the choir, can I, can I find a way to befriend somebody in their choir? If it's what investing into it is what what? I would, I would befriend somebody in the choir. And then there's a way to catch guys if you want to catch them from people very close to them. So you're just going to meet one of the girls close to you and say, ah, there's this guy in your church that a lot of people talk about. Um, we let this one of the very godly guys, somebody that loves God, somebody that... Whenever you want to investigate a guy, when you're talking to people that know him, don't, don't talk like there's a problem with him. Paint the best picture about him. You just say something like, which one? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? How many of you know what I'm talking about? The next thing you're going to get is, sorry ma, um, we only have one here. The one you're describing, it's not like this one. So that happened to a lady who walked up to us. She works in one of the commissions in Abuja. And she said, Daddy, I found the man I want to marry. Finally, God has answered my prayer. I said, really? She said, yes, that the guy works in this particular commission. I just had in my spirit, go to the commission, ask after him. Very wonderful lady. And her own commission is just next door to his own. So in the morning, she went to his commission. I met a girl at the desk. She said, um... There's a guy I'm looking for here. One of your nice staff. She used nice accolades on him. She said, um, the one we have. And then she said, the one single guy is not married. She said, sorry, the one we have is a married man. I'm telling you this before God. She said, the one we have in our place is the same name, but not the one you are describing. He is a married person somehow she looked and she saw the guy passing by she said let me call the one that I know maybe he knows the one you are talking about that's how she said Mr. this the guy showed up and guess who he found the lady he wants to marry she said hey madam this is the one that I know but he's married trouble <laughs> that was how the girl came back and she was crying Guess what she found out? The guy is married in Kaduna with three children. The Bible says we are in the last days. The Bible says test every spirit. Don't just believe people. Particularly with matters of your destiny. The Bible says there are many wolves that have come into the kingdom now in what? God will open your eyes. Is this helping you at all? All right, let me give you number two principle. Let me know how many minutes I have left. Number two principle. Principles of what we call untangled emotions. <laughs> principles of untangled emotions. Untangled. The reason I can talk a little bit freely here is because I am told that this is the home of education. So I think I can speak freely here. Somebody say untangled emotions. 
Paul said something in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. Paul said, there's this one thing I do. He said, forgetting the past. Somebody say, forget the past. Very good. Paul said, forgetting the past, those things which are behind, and reaching for those things which are before. So one of the things we encourage you to do if you're going to build a lasting relationship whether you're single or married one of the things you must never play with is to constantly learn to forget the past in fact the older you get in marriage the more you must learn to practice what i'm teaching you about now principle of untangled emotions the latest divorce we are beginning to see this will shock you we are seeing divorce among people who are 28 years old in marriage, 30 years old in marriage. Yes. It's the latest trend of divorce we are seeing. 28, 25, 30 years. Ma? Yeah. And it's because of what I'm about to talk with you about. Talk to you about. And so some of them, when I ask them, I say, ah, are you going to throw 28 years? Like, ah, no, Pastor Sam, the marriage finished two years into the marriage. I said, I don't understand. She said, Pastor Sam, the only reason I stayed in the marriage was because I got pregnant early into the marriage. And I made up, I have made up my mind that I will not leave my children the way my mother left me. She said, Pastor Sam, it was children that kept me in the marriage. And I have vowed when my children finish school, I will be gone. Yes untangled emotions tangled emotions somebody raped you when you were young don't let somebody who is innocent become the victim tangled emotions you were abused in your family when you were growing up verbally sexually you were abused physically don't let an innocent person who wants to pour love on you become the victim of all your abuses. He is not your abuser. She is not your abuser. But she's now the victim. I know this may be a sensitive area I'm touching on some of our lives. And you know one of the things everybody knows how to mask up. A man looked at me, a pastor, he came to me and he said, Pastor, please help me. I said, what's the problem? He said, Pastor, help me oh, before I go and commit adultery. I said, what's the issue? He says, I'm my wife. He said, every time I want to touch my wife, he said, in the night, as soon as I want to touch my wife, he said, she'll push my hand away. I said, no, can I get a talk with your wife? And she came. Part of my area of training as a relationship coach is we touch a little bit in the psychology area. So I called the woman and I said, Madam, can we get to talk? She said, Pastor, all this is my husband like accusing me oh. That my husband always accused me that I pushed his apart on me. I can't even remember I did anything like that. I see. The moment she said I can't remember, I knew I was dealing with something. We're dealing with some subliminal programming here. So I said, okay, ma'am, we need to talk a little bit. Can, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Can we go back to when you, were, when you were small? So guess what we found out? She got raped at the age of nine. And she kept it a secret to herself. Sad part of it, ma'am is the fact that the person who raped her came with a blue shirt guess what is the favorite shirt color of the husband blue i wish i can dig deep into some things here but i'm just giving you general overviews And, and so when, when we got to realize that the, the husband's favorite color is blue, the moment she said the person who raped her is blue, I know the husband's color is blue. I said, ma'am, what's your husband's favorite color? She said, it's blue. I said, okay. Immediately, I could put things together. I knew where the problem was. Because part of what I've done as a study is the area of the subconscious. Um, you know, programming of the mind, how it works. How the subliminal controls the conscious mind and all of that. So, I said, ma'am, can I see you and your husband? And the husband came and we sat down together. I said, sir, can I ask you to stop doing something? Sir? Stop using blue for now. He says, sir, what happened? I said, what normally happens is that any day you wear blue, you have activated the subconscious of your wife. The pain, 
that your wife has not yet dealt with because she covered it she tried telling her mother and the mother hushed her so she made up her mind she will never tell anybody I said so when you wear blue you activate that consciousness and then it influences her without her knowledge so I now turned to the woman and I said madam we need to deal with what you are dealing with which is what we call repression you are not suppressing you are repressing in repression you put under what is still alive and cover it up it's like the rug in your house when you are having dirt in your house you sweep it under the rug right have they left your house when you walk on the rug can't you feel them they influence your movement am I correct that is what repression is all about what is it that happened to you that you have not had the courage to talk to somebody about it's called tangled emotions there are married people with it there are men with it there are women with it it could be an abuse it could be a trauma something happened in the past that really affected your life and you have never sat down to process it to confront it to deal with it anytime you want to think about it either shame either fear either you have guilt whether you killed somebody whether you committed an abortion it happened it's time to deal with it praying in tongues will not deal with it Matuki Philip on do pregadia when you are done, it is still there. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? Why is it that in the night you fear the dark? Look straight. I'm not talking to some I'm, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to your neighbor. Why is it that you can't stay alone in the night? why must you have bible by your head and then when you want to pray father let four angels be by my right hand side five angels here and then six angels at the door where is the fear coming with your emotions are tangled up because of things that have happened in the past somebody look at you and called you you are a failure you are somebody will never be good somebody says something to you you've not been able to deal with it tangled emotions we call it baggage so here you are you're going into marriage does anybody have a bag here that can maybe like a backpack or something anybody with a backpack here god bless you sir can you come with it put it on your back sir thank you sir just put it on your back thank you you look sharp man i love you good mm -hmm. so ladies and gentlemen i present to you today uh sorry sweetheart come in the presence of the holy god and all of that we come to join before you today do, do you also have any small backpack you can oh yeah quick oh yeah it's, uh, it's what it is by revelation right put it on your back my sister find a way to just hang it on the back uh -huh. it's at the back of it oh yeah face each other it's at the back somebody say baggage Somebody say tangled emotions. Don't you like this beard like Aaron? I mean, who will see this and not marry Aaron? Praise God. Look at the beautiful face of God's sake. You need to kill them with that smile. Let them see the smile. God! Huh? But what you are not seeing that behind the smiles I carry back and behind the beards <laughs> I like the way Father God put his in that load <laughs> when we talk about your baggage we're talking about your history from childhood until adulthood experiences and encounters you have had pains you have suffered unresolved memories words that have been spoken to you that are still like daggers in your heart things you don't want to remember but they are still there not in the bag 
what your father did to you in the back what your mother what your uncle did to you there in the back your first boyfriend is in the back so that anytime you are inside the market the moment they say Jude hey thank God I thought it was the one I <laughs> anywhere you are Jude something jumps on the inside of you any name that always take you back to where you are coming from is indicative that that name is still alive in you any word that triggers fear anxiety panic in you for instance words like i love you so there are people the moment you tell them i love you you have created some problem you know why the moment you say i love you it triggers the memory of the first person who said i love you and betrayed them do you understand what i'm saying here i know you do so here you are i love you <laughs> And she's looking at you, be smiling. You, you are happy thinking she's responding well. What you don't know now is that she's automatically seeing you like that. Psst, they don't come again. That's how that one did told me I love you. He <laughs> sees that with his beard too. <laughs> he don't come. That's why they come. He love you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, my sister, take one leg backward. Take one, put one leg at the back. The moment you say I love you commitment don't drop from that moment she begins to relate with you with caution you know why you have activated pain in her mind did he say anything wrong but it triggered something wrong in her is that his fault it is her responsibility to deal with her past unfortunately she brought it into the relationship himself too carried his own down um sweetheart uh, please can you just send me some little um i left my check in the house i left my card in the house can you just send me some twenty thousand? huh you don't know what you have uh, triggered because the last girl that left him drained him so anytime a girl talks to him and mentions money it activates the consciousness of the one that broke his heart. Baggage. Somebody say baggage. Have you look at your neighbors and make I see what your day or back. <laughs> Somebody said to me, say, Pastor, now box so people carry box. <laughs> Husband and wife in the same house looking at each other my wife my wife she should look at her my husband my husband <laughs> and he's, he's looking at her through his bag <laughs> the woman that has caused me so much pain in my life hey, how are you doing she too she's looking at him see the person don't waste my life bags baggage how we carry about pain we carry history there are women that have not forgiven their husband for 20 years even after the man has said i am sorry several times and he has found a way to restitute he bought them cars she has, she's driving the car see the wicked car way by me for that wicked thing we do a woman says sorry sir does he think that taking me to America is going to solve the problem? But did he say, I'm sorry? Oh, yes, he said, Pastor, is that something we just leave somebody? With all the things. Do you know why you said that day? That's what I, what I said. It. You were the one that you insulted me. You resort, You created this scenario. But I take responsibility. And I'm sorry for what I said. But you've not even apologized for the part you played. I have apologized. You're like, hey, you think that's how the thing just goes? But this is seven years. It doesn't go like that. It takes time. Time. Like how long? I built you a house. I bought you this. I've spoken. I've knelt down. I brought my ancestors. I woke my father from the grave. I brought everybody here. Eh? Give me. 
It takes time. Let me look at someone and say, let it go. So this is how people come to get married, sir. And the pastor there too. Can I have your hand? Can I have your hand? So ladies and gentlemen. Uh -huh. And the church. I present to you now. Mr. and Mrs. Austin. You know what I love about pastors? God bless pastors, men of God. Pastors are very smart people. They know these problems are there. See what the pastors will do. Ladies and gentlemen. I present to you. Oh, yeah, talk. <laughs> From today, ladies and gentlemen, I send them to you. Mr. Oya, oh, be going. That's how they will carry the bags into family. Now, this is where the trouble starts. Come closer. Mistakenly, the woman makes a statement. You just say something. Maybe she just, as a woman, she just acted. Bring me water. She brought it in a glass. Maybe not the kind of glass he wants. And she drops it on the table, just the cup. Carry your bag. Keep it down. The issue with baggage is that it always guides how you interpret actions and behaviors. The first thing he does when he sees the cup on the table, open your bag. That was how Nkechi, oh yeah, look into the back, your past. That was how Nkechi to drop the cup. That's how disrespect starts. I'm not going to let it happen again to me again. We are close the back. I have gotten what I want. It happened like that with Nkechi. Uh -huh. Where are you? Come back. You have no respect, Abi. Criticism has started. You have no respect. You drop the cup like that. I'm your husband. No respect. And she's like, sorry, sweetheart. I was actually doing something when you asked me to bring the water. So I, I just rushed to bring the water. And I, I, I don't, what was I supposed to do? My God. You didn't know you were supposed to have a, a saucer under the cup? And the saucer must be inside a tree. <laughs> sorry so that if that's the way you want it just tell me that any time else I want to bring you water I should make sure it's in a glass cup in a tray in a saucer and then should be also in a tray and the tray should also be in a big like something and then there should be flowers I should garnish the then I can put it also on the cart and roll it to you. I mean, just tell me, tell me how you want. Is that okay? Just tell me. How can you say I should tell you? You don't have common sense. Can you see? Can you see where trouble is starting from? It was just a simple matter of a call. Now you don't have common sense. I know they didn't train you well in your family. We have not even started marriage. See how you are treating me. You think you will treat me like a dog? Eh? Let me let you know if that's your father you want to treat. Treat him like that, not me. She has said nothing. She has done nothing. This is just two weeks into marriage. Where are all these words coming from? Carry your bags. Sir. Carry, carry, carry. It is influenced by memories. What did she do wrong? She is now the victim of what Nkechi did. When Nkechi was in his life, he lacked the courage to confront Nkechi. He has found an innocent woman who truly loves him now submits to him. A weak woman has activated his strength. Now he is a strong man in the face of a weak woman. Therefore, everything he could have done to a strong woman, he will do to a weak woman. <laughs> is this helping you at all? Yes, statement. Can you please go and do this? If I'm not, can you please... 
kindly go and do this the statement of command has a way of reactivating the memories unresolved memories from our past the moment the guy used go and do this she remembered that's how my father normally talks that's how the other guy talked to me is that okay the next thing she came after she forgot what he told her to go and get you know the woman she'll come after him uh, hey, um, what did you say again no I said go and get the basket you never instruct me like that again in your life you never never instruct me like that again in your life if you want to instruct instruct your mother not me sweetheart what's going on oh you don't know what's going on eh? I think you must be daft for you not to know something must be wrong with you are you even sure you say you went to school am i really sure you went to school so by now you don't even know that something is wrong and of course seriously that's where trouble starts from and the guy was like where's all this statement coming from and unfortunately you activate the beast instead of the best out of the man that's where trouble starts from question did the man offend her? Did he intend to offend her? But he said something that triggered the memory of an unresolved offense. The father she could not talk to and the former lover she could not talk to. Now she can confront in the man that is nice. That's where you see some women who are blessed with very good men. They overshoot their boundaries. Do you understand what I'm saying here? What do we do if you're going to have a lasting marriage? Take out your bag. Bring down the bag. This is a very tough thing. Don't help me remove my bag. Focus on your own. So I open the bag. Have you noticed in the airport, the moment you get to that place, they'll say, please, can you open your bags? We want to check what is inside. And as you begin to open the bag, they will ask for your permission to open it. And on one of the days, they found a little liquid in my wife's bag. And it was over 100 cm. They said, sorry ma'am, we know you like it. But you're not going to travel with it. It is over the expected limit. We're not going to let you travel. You must drop this here for you to look at your life and look at your past and say to yourself what are the things that I need to let go of if you follow my singles program this is something I am very passionate about whether singles or couples I'm very passionate about this because if we don't get it right we complicate the lives of the children we're bringing into the world we always have a statement we make wounded people wound others wounded people do what they wound others what is the wound that you're carrying is there no bomb in Gilead there is a God who can heal your heart when I was growing up my father wounded me emotionally I found healing later in my life my, my wife to exhaust all the seven points I don't know why the Holy Spirit is keeping me here. Most of the crisis we have in our relationships, they are all tied to emotional wounds. Histories and our past. Pains and our fears. I remember we were with a man of God we all honor so much by the name uh, Bill Hybels. I don't know if some of you know uh, you'll be hearing about uh, there's this leadership program that takes place all over the world every every year amazing program by Bill Hybels. you understand that's what people like Reverend Sam are there me name all the senior men of God they all go there so we, we go there every year and I will not forget the last meeting we had with Bill Hybels, and he was talking to us as leaders and was saying to us even though we are pastors he was telling us that what affects what controls our conscious behaviors are unresolved issues from our past 
for instance a member treated you in a funny way when you started church from that moment you too as a pastor anytime members come <laughs> that's how they normally come can, can you see that as how they come papa god bless you papa oh my papa i don't know why i didn't meet you early in my life and in your mind you're just like that's how the other one too said it and then they finally left me so the pastor too doesn't trust anybody because he was wounded in the past Thank you.